What's up guys, welcome back to my channel at JSIC Poker. My name is JSIC and this is going to my fourth vlog. And so far I gotta say that things have been going very well so far. I've got hundreds of views in just three videos. And I just wanna thank everyone who's tuned in uh, for watching my videos. Thank you for your support and giving me this opportunity to grow my channel into hopefully something bigger so I can get some sort of income from YouTube. Like guys like Rampage Poker, Brad Owen, Andrew Nimi, uh, Jason DePaulo. Ultimately, that is my goal. I'm definitely all in on <laughs> improving this channel until I get there. Ultimately, my goal is to be possibly, you know, the best poker playing vlogger skill-wise. And in order for me to do that, you know, I gotta grind hard, I gotta study hard. And so I just wanted to talk about uh, what happened last night. Last night, I actually decided to dabble in some tournaments, some online MTTs. I played ACR and I played three tournaments. All right, so I had a total buy-in of $512, I think $12, and I actually got seventh place in the Sunday warm-up with 2,500 entrants. So I got $4,800 prize. So not bad, but I did want to talk about that as well early on in this video. I'll do that in just a moment. But the reason why I decided to play tournaments is because, well, all the best players in the world are playing tournaments. And, you know, most of the money is in tournaments. So if I want to be the best, I got to play tournaments. And so a little bit about what I'm going to do moving forward. My recent goal is to make maybe 5 to 10K and hold them and then take some more shots at 10, 20. All right, so I'm going to try to uh, win some more playing cash and then I'll try to take some shots at 10, 20, hold them and potentially quarter, quarter PLO. And if I feel like doing something different, I'll do that as well. As well as just continue playing 30 hours a week at least and then play uh, online MTTs every Sunday. All right, so that's enough about me. Uh, let's get to the hands. Hope you guys enjoy this video. If you do and you like my hand analysis, I put out three to four videos a week. Guys, do me a big favor, hit that like and subscribe button for the YouTube algorithm. It definitely helps. All right, guys, let's get to the video. Alright guys, so this hand starts with me looking down at pocket nines from the cutoff and we have around 55 big blinds to start. We open to 2.2 big blinds and it folds to the small blind who has around 34 big blinds and he 3 bets to 8.5 big blinds. And as you can see, um, you know, the payouts are pretty big at this point. I'm entering as chip leader, or I was, now I'm about, I think, second or third place and first gets 32k. I'm guaranteed 4.7k. I can easily just fold my way and play really tight and snug and to probably, you know, third or fourth place and, and get a much bigger pay jump, yeah, make at least 11k, right? Now, obviously I wasn't really thinking that clearly. Um, I haven't been playing tournaments at all in the last several years, so I was very out of practice. I played my C game for most of this tournament and I actually making, end up making a really big mistake here. Now, my particular read on my opponent, I knew with his big pocket pairs, he was sizing down preflop. So I actually sized, saw him size down with, with, uh, with pocket aces to five big blinds, and he was sizing up with big aces, right? So even though I'm confident I did have him beat here, I honestly think with three other three to four players shorter than me, I think pocket nines is a fold here because if he has either tens or queens or ace queen or ace king and he's not really aware of the ICM because he's also ahead of a, a few other stacks and he makes a mistake uh, three bet calling off here with ace queen, uh, then I'm, I'm in a pretty bad position if I lose his hand because then all of a sudden I'm you know, fourth or fifth or sixth place here. But I do end up making a, um, a call here. I think nines is on the borderline. With my sizing and reads, I could jam. Like I said, I think pocket tens is is probably the uh, the hand I should go with, is like the bottom of my range here of, of going all in. But I, I do end up making the call here, and we do see a flop of 10 of hearts, 10 of spades, 6 of diamonds. Now, he ends up betting close to minimum, which is two big blinds, and actually end up jamming 
for 24 big blinds, which is obviously another huge mistake here. I could have easily raised smaller and accomplished the same thing without having to risk over half my stack. And if he rejams, I can easily fold. And if he flats, I can cautiously play turns and rivers in position. But I do end up making that mistake again, two mistakes in the same hand. I end up going all in, and he immediately snaps me off with ace of diamonds, ten of clubs. And um, yeah, that's the <laughs> after that I was pretty steamed at, after this. I, I really thought I blew it. I could have easily won or, or made much more, at least 7k more. And I ended up, you know, quickly reviewing these hands and looking up a lot of videos on ICM. And these are the conclusions that I came up with after I did look up those videos. So even though I, I did um, not win, I made a big mistake, it, it was actually a really good learning experience. Honestly, I got really lucky to even get to this point because I just won a bunch of flips and I was playing really bad. Now, I believe I also made a mistake here in this hand as well, um, where I opened ace nine suited from the hijack and the big blind with 12 big blinds who actually threw that shoved on me right before in the same exact positions in orbit before and nearly the same stack sizes, he goes all in on me again. Um, and I end up folding here. Uh, so now there's nearly 17 big blinds in the middle and I only have to call up 10 big blinds to potentially win 27 big blinds. I actually ended up folding, uh, which I think is incorrect because I was opening wide here and his 3-bet jamming range can easily be hands like queen-jack suited, ace-5 suited plus, small pocket pairs, even potentially king-queen offsuit. But even if he does have a pair, I'm still doing fairly decent against pairs. And, you know, plus he's short, and he's going to be incentivized to 3-bet shove a much wider range of hands versus a loose opener like me. Because, you know, he really has nothing to lose at this point with his stack. So I think this was another mistake I made, but um, you know, hopefully I'll learn from that. Now this brings me to the last hand I played in the tournament where I did bust, and I looked down at Queen Jack offsuit from under the gun plus one with around 17 big blinds to start the hand. And I decide to open here uh, for two big blinds. I do not like the open because my image is loose at this point, and any of the five players behind me have bigger stacks and they can easily push me around by three betting me or flatting me and making life difficult for me. Um, but I do end up opening here, trying to gather some chips. Now the villain who we lost to, uh, who had ace 10 off, calls from the cutoff, and the big blind who's a good player calls from the big blind. So now there's around nine big blinds in the middle, and we see a flop of queen of spades, eight of clubs, and the four of spades. And with the SPR being so low, I think we just have to bet call with this hand because we really only lose two hands like king, queen, pocket fours, or queen eight, because ace, queen should be three betting us pre, and eights is probably three betting us as well. So I do end up betting a half pot, three big blinds, the cutoff folds, and the big blind flats. Now the turn is a 10 of diamonds. He checks. And now the SPR is one to one and we shove for the rest around 12 bit blinds left. And he actually snaps us off with pocket fours. Uh, he flopped a set on the flop and we actually end up busting the tournament seventh place after entering as a chip leader um, at the final table. So I was extremely disappointed. And after that, honestly, I was had mixed emotions. On one end, I was happy we won, you know, basically $4,300 uh, and getting that far. Uh, on the other hand, I was pretty steamed because, you know, I entered as a chip leader and, and feel like if I but played much better and had more knowledge and and I was more well-equipped, I would have, I could have easily won or at least gotten, you know, a much better payout. But it's okay, you know, after that, I just decided to calm down and I ended up reviewing my hands and studying strategy on how I should have played the final table. So even though I didn't get the W, I still learned a lot. And I do believe I'm going to be much better prepared the next time I reach a final table. And that's exactly why I'm going to study a lot more tournaments from now on. But that's it for the tournament hands. Okay, let's get to the hands that I played this session. All right, guys. So now we're playing 510 No Limit, five to $1,500 buy-in at Commerce Casino. We've had a great run so far. And we've had, we have yet to lose here in the last few weeks. And now the hijack recreational player limps in for $10.00. 
small blind limps, and we lucked out at 8-7 of clubs from the big blind. Now the recreational player just lost two pots in a row and got stacked about a hand ago and is obviously steaming. So I decided to bump it up to $60 because I believe he's going to be playing face up at this point and I feel like I can outplay him on a lot of boards. He calls and the small blind folds. So now there's $130 going to a flop and it's actually a decent one for us. It's the ace of clubs, the seven of spades and the queen of spades. So we actually flop bottom pair with the backdoor flush draw. And this board is way better for our range than his because we have all the best top pairs. We have all the sets, etc. Potentially even best flush draws and straight draws like king jack of spades, 10 jack of spades. So we end up betting about half pot to $65. He snap calls. And now at this point, I'm putting him on a flush draw or potentially a weak ace, maybe even a queen. Uh, I don't think he'd snap call that quickly with just a queen, but the turn is a good one for us to barrel. It's actually the queen of clubs because now we have a backdoor flush draw with our bottom pair and I decided to bet $200 to try and get his flush draws, gut shots, or weak aces to fold, but he's not a believer and he snap calls, which leads me to believe that he could potentially have a queen or a non-believing ace. Well, most likely he has a weak ace here, and most likely I'm going to be barreling a lot of these rivers. And the river is golden because it's actually the six of clubs. So we make our backdoor flush. He has around $800 left and we cover. So I actually decide to go all in here hoping he has a queen. Or he just is super tilted and calls me with an ace. Um, so I do go all in. He looks visibly frustrated. Takes a while. And unfortunately he, do he does decide to fold. But it's okay since we take down a nice $660 pot in the first hand. Now in this next hand, we look down at Ace-10 offsuit from the blind $20 raise position. As we all agreed to do it for run one round. And the small blind loose fish in seat one limps. And the big blind limps in as well. And we see a flop of Ace-Jack-6 with two clubs. It gets checked around to us and we bet half pot to $35 as we most likely have the best hand since nobody raised pre-flop. The small blind calls and he decides to lead out on a turn two of spades for $70, which actually brings a backdoor flush draw out there as well. This is an easy call for us as the two doesn't change anything. Um, we block ace deuce that he could potentially lead out with and he can still have a lot of draws here as I've seen him do. And the river comes in offsuit king of diamonds. He checks, and at this point, there's really no point for us to bet here since his turn bet is representing either very strong hands or bluffs. So we decide to check, and we were actually right, right, because he actually shows a missed flush draw. I think we did make a good check, and we win a decent sized $200 pot. Maybe we could have bet small to induce, but I really don't think this is the type of opponent to do that. So far, this was actually the only session I started where I didn't start out losing big pots early on. So I'm actually a little concerned since every time we did start off losing, we ended up winning uh, at the end. But, you know, now we look down at a nice ace-king offsuit with the ace of spades and the king of diamonds. We make a standard open from under the gun plus one to $35 and a fish toward direct left calls. And now a fish on the button, three bet squeezes us to $100. Now I've actually played with him before in the sessions that I posted earlier. I know he has sizing tells because when he has big pairs, he makes it way bigger. And with weaker hands, he makes it smaller, just like this. So I go with my read and I decide to four bet to $325. The opponent on my left folds now he starts to posture as if he's gonna put me all in because there's actually history between us where I've pretty much three bet him every time and bullied him the entire night when I did have position on him. He actually had to even move seats because of me the last time we played. But eventually my read turns out to be true and he does end up folding here. So we take down a decent pot there. It's a solid start to the session and we're playing well so far. Let's keep it going you guys. And now we look down at pocket kings from early position with the king of diamonds and the king of hearts. We raise to $35 and the fish to our left calls again. And this time the big blind comes along as well. 
So now it's three players to a flop with 115 in the middle. The flop is a good one for us. It's the Jack of Clubs, the Seven of Spades, and the Deuce of Spades. Now the small blind who's been playing tight so far, but is a recreational player, leads out half pot for $50. He has around $800 to start the hand, and I actually decide to just call here, hoping he has just a weak jack and we can get value later on. In hindsight, I wish I raised because he plays face up and is obviously representing a jack here, plus I position and I can deny equity in case the fish to my left has a flush draw. But I do end up just calling here, which is fine too. And the fish behind me comes along as well. Now the turn is a terrible card for us because it's the ace of clubs. So now any ace of spades, uh, for example, if someone had the ace x of spades with the flush draw now gets there, a7 gets there, ace jack gets there. But the small blind checks as I expect him to do. And now I check and the fish to my left bets half pot to $125. The small blind calls and I immediately make the fold because I am not expecting the fish on my left to bluff into two players <laughs> for such a small sizing. And it definitely looks like a value bet. But the river comes a six of diamonds the small blind checks and the fish bets $265. The small blind says, if you hit the ace, you win and calls. And the fish to my left shows ace of spades, six off for runner runner two pair. He makes a terrible call pre-flop versus my early position open, floats the flop with ace high and manages to get there. <laughs> but we do not mind because these are the types of hands that actually keep the fish coming back, you guys. So they got to win sometimes, right? But at least now I know I'm at a great table and I'm confident I have a really big edge versus pretty much everyone at this table. And we look down at pocket queens with the queen of spades and the queen of hearts. We raise it up to $35 again and everyone folds except the button who's the fish that we've been able to bully around every hand. And he instantly three bets me to $120. Now at this point, I know he's trying to get me back Plus, if he had a really strong hand, he probably would have made it much bigger, like $200 plus. So I go with my read once again, and I 4-bet him to $425. He doesn't take long at all before making the call. Now, I'm very confident that we have the best hand, and he most likely has a medium pocket pair or some high-suited ace that wants to see a flop. Now, I'm hoping for a good flop so we can hopefully stack him for the rest of his chips. And the flop is actually a great one. It's the 10 of clubs, the 10 of hearts, and the four of hearts. I don't expect him to have any 10s here, uh, unless he has ace 10 suited, which honestly I don't even think he would three bet, but possibly. And now there's $870 in the pot. He only has $605 left. And with our specific hand, I decide to go all in instead of betting small to induce, because I don't want him to call a small bet with a pair and potentially get scared away in case an ace or a king comes. He doesn't take long at all before piling in the rest of his chips. The turn comes a eight of diamonds and the river is a three of hearts. We confidently flip over our pocket queens hoping as two pair, but unlucky for us, he shows us the ace jack of hearts for the nut flush. And I actually think he played his hand okay which is probably the only hand he played well versus us, but he still got it in behind. So we get unlucky, you guys, and we end up losing a $2,080 pot on the river. Oh well, on to the next hand. So now after that hand, we only have around $500 left, but like I said, you guys, I have a one buy-in rule. If I lose $1,500, I am out. If I win, I continue playing for the six hours, and I'm hoping we can make a comeback just like we've been able to do every time so far. And this time that same fish limps in under the gun and I actually decide to limp in with king deuce of spades on the button, which I think is fine in a soft lineup. We could potentially hit a flush here and stack a lower flush. I don't like raising because players who limp in this game can easily do it with hands like king jack offsuit, king 10 suited, king nine suited, king queen off, and we can easily be dominated here. Uh, plus we're short as well. The small blind folds and the big blind checks and so it's three ways to a flop, which is actually great for us. It's the queen of clubs, the nine of spades and the 10 of spades. 
So we actually flop the second nut flush draw with the gut shot. And the small blind, who's a tight recreational player, bets $20, under the gun calls, and of course we decide to call as well. Hoping to turn a flush or a jack for a straight. The turn is amazing because it's the eight of spades. So now the straights gets there too, and we have the second nut flush. The small blind checks and the fish who we just lost to over bets to $100. And I'm very confident we have the best hand here because I don't think he would over bet with the nut flush. I don't see why. Plus we have the second nuts, you guys. I have around $350 behind and I don't want to scare him away from straights. So I decide to just call and the small blind calls as well. So I'm putting the small blind on maybe a set or potentially a two pair that's fishing for a full house maybe even a flop straight. <clears throat> but the river is another great card for us as it doesn't change anything. It's the seven of clubs. So we still have the third nuts now and we only lose to a straight flush or a nut flush. Um, now this time it gets checked around to me, which I'm loving because we now have the perfect stack to jam to try and get called by straight or potentially lower flushes. Plus we just lost a couple of pots in a row so it probably looks like we're steaming. And that's exactly what we do. We go all in for the rest of our chips for $350, hoping to get called. The small blind sighs and calls for the rest of his $165 stack, and the fish from the under the gun position folds. The small blind rec player, who looked disappointed the entire time, surprisingly flips over ace queen of spades for the nut flush. He actually flopped top pair with the nut flush draw. And I'm shocked he did not raise pre-flop. I mean, that's just how bad and, and passive these players are. So we actually get coolered really bad here in a $725 pot. And things are not going well so far in this session. We now only have around $250 left. But honestly, even with such a small stack, I still probably have a big edge and can easily run this up like I've done in the past. So I'm not sweating it. We're up quite a bit at this place, plus we just won $4,300 the night before. I'm just hoping to hold or not get coolered in the next hand I play. So let's get to the next hand. So in this next hand, we're looking to chip up here. We look down at A7 of clubs from the cutoff. The middle position, who's a good regular, but opens aggressively, opens to $30. And the hijack, who's a loose caller, calls. And with my read on both opponents, I actually decide to go all in for the rest of my stack for $250. The middle position regular immediately folds and the recreational takes a little bit. Looks like he's almost about to call, but eventually folds. So now we actually chip up a little bit and win a nice decent sized $75 pot. And now we're sitting at around $325. Let's go you guys, let's try and run this up. Now I look down at the ace of spades and the jack of hearts from early position and we raise to $30. Not surprisingly, the fish who beat our queens calls on the button, and we go heads up to a flop, which is a good one for us. It's the ace of diamonds, the queen of clubs, and the seven of diamonds. We definitely have the rage advantage here, as we have all ace queens, all ace kings, uh, all aces, queens, potentially pocket sevens, and he would have three bet all his strong ha ace x hands, like ace queen, ace king, queens, and so we really only lose to pocket sevens here. And so we bet half pot to $35 and he calls. The turn is another great card for us. It's actually the jack of clubs. So now we have two pair and we really only lose to king 10 who had a gut shot on the flop or a slow played pocket sevens, which I would expect to raise on the flop. Now the pot's $145. We only have around $250 left. There's two flush draws out there plus straight draws he can potentially have. I decide to just overbet all in because I feel like if he did have a straight plus flush draw, he's definitely calling and we can potentially get a call from ace 10 offsuit if he thinks we're tilted. I'm a little bit concerned because he snap calls, but the river comes a brick. It's the six of spades and I confidently show my ace jack two pair, but he actually shows king 10 of clubs with the nut straight on the turn. He floated us on the flop with the gut shot. He only had three outs and was 12% to win on the flop because we had the other jack. And he actually ends up binking it on the turn, which gave us two pairs well. 
So we actually get stacked for the first time at Commerce Casino in the last month, and we end up losing $1,400 this session. I say $1,400 instead of $1,500 because later I looked down in my pocket and I found $100 in chips that I forgot to add to my stack during a table change. Oh well, you guys, you can't win them all. That's the way it goes in poker. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. Good game us, you guys. All right, guys. So unfortunately, that session did not go well for us. We lost $1,400, pretty much just getting cooler and sucked out in every pot we played. So that was actually the first session we lost in quite a while, and it's okay. Uh, we lost fourteen hundred dollars. I was kind of wondering when, like, I'd lose, so I was on a, a pretty good run there. And hey, that's okay. Uh, we practice bankroll management, stick to our rules. So just one buy and then we lose. Times like this, I'm just gonna go home and study uh, the tournaments. You know, I'm, I'm really trying to tune up my tournament game. So I'm going to go home, work on my stream, my tournaments, and just relax. And there's always another day tomorrow. How I use bankroll management is I, I kind of try to stick with at least, you know, 50 buy-ins. Right? I think that's plenty for me. And even with 50 buy-ins, I can still take shots at, at 10, 20. So I'm going to try to play some 5, 10 PLO games. But I got to find those. Those are private games. I'll probably try and, you know, find one tomorrow. And then I'll obviously an analyze my hands for you guys and record those as well. All right, so hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, if you guys haven't already, please like and subscribe. I got to post my losses along with my wins. Got to keep it real. But there's always another day tomorrow. We'll get plenty of buy-ins for 510. So basically, we'll never go broke. And I'm excited to play some PLO tomorrow. All right, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace.